I have another holster project, and this one I have to start by drawing a paper pattern up because this is a, a one-off. It's not one that I've made before. So I start with a tracing of the particular firearm. I met the person at our local gun range, and he brought the firearm out unloaded. I took it, laid it down, traced it, and then I rolled it over on its sights, across the sights, until it was laying facing the other direction, and I traced that side. And this gives you not just the dimensions of the particular firearm, but how um, much the radius is over the top, or the diameter is over the top. Uh, and then you just start drawing around it. And I draw usually about three quarters of an inch out on one of the uh, sides of the tracings. Sometimes on blockier automatics like locks, so you've got to go an inch out to get it to fit. But what's going to make this holster stand out is that it needs to have a thumb break on it, which is what I'm trying to draw in this particular case right here. Uh, I'm using a small piece of spring steel that I use as a stiffener in there and making sure I give it enough room all the way around it to uh, be able to stitch later on. And then you just sort of start filling in. You can use the uh, tracing as a guide of where you want to have it like this um, it covers the sights and it covers the trigger guard because this is a double action pistol I always think it's really important to keep the trigger guard covered so somebody doesn't accidentally pull it with their finger on the trigger but then this is the other side of the thumb break and basically what I'm doing is I'm gonna measure it up but I'm kinda tracing it out now but it needs to be the thickness of the firearm plus whatever distance down from the thumb break, the thumb side of the thumb break uh, that the snap will be hiding kind of behind the firearm. And that'll tell you where your snap goes on it, basically. Um, I don't ever really like doing these without being able to take the piece once I've got it pretty much cut out and going and trying it and seeing if it's going to fit because sometimes thumb breaks can be a little bit finicky uh, about getting exactly the right distances to get everything to fit nice and tight. Uh, on this particular pistol, since it is double action, it's not carried with the hammer down or with the hammer back. Uh, it's a little easier because you've got that space where, where the hammer can kind of catch it and that gives you a little bit of leeway. But on some pistols, like 1911s, it's very difficult to make a thumb break that's going to actually hold it in the holster because it just wants to slide down off of the back of it because it's usually carried cocked. Uh, but once I've got one side of the pattern drawn up and the thumb break's sort of on the other, I'll trim off the excess of the paper, fold it in half until the, the tracings of the pistol line up with each other and then I'll use that side to trace the other side. So I have a mostly symmetrical pattern, again, except for the thumb break is the only asymmetrical part of it. And that is basically the pattern for this particular pistol. This is a, a Bursa 380, a Bursa Thunder 380, I think it's called, uh, that this is supposed to fit. And I'll be ready to cut it out of the leather. Now, when you're cutting a piece out of leather on a holster, especially, I've noticed this is the case, you want to either be directly with the backbone of the hide are directly against the backbone of the hide. And what I mean by that is it needs to lay where the center line that's going to fold is either running parallel to the backbone or perpendicular to the backbone. If you kind of angle it in whatever just fits really nice on the piece of leather to try and use as little leather as possible, you're going to wind up with it wanting to twist on you as you put it together. And I've seen uh, holsters, somebody made one for a, something larger, a mirror leg, and it twisted 90 degrees over the distant the length of the holster and they had to remake it. Luckily that was not one that I made. It was one that somebody I worked with made at one point. But then once I've got it all rough cut, I'm going to use some hole punches to 
get in all the corners that are radius so that I don't have to uh, cut too close in there. So I don't have any points that are going to be weak spots. You've got nice rounded edges all the time rather than where you slip with a knife and leave a little cut that's going to create a spot that could rip. And I've got the pieces all cut out. I make sure that they sort of are going to fit together, right? Everything lines up well. The thumb brake sort of looks right. Um, next is to cut out a piece that's going to be my liner. And for that, I'm just going to mark roughly outside around it, half inch or so all the way around, away from the edge. And just rough cut that. Because I'll trim it after I get them glued together. And on this particular holster, the it's probably a little heavy for the the firearm that's in it. It's a fairly light little firearm, but um, I'm using six to seven ounce leather on the outside, and then a piece of about four ounce on the inside. So that makes you know a ten to twelve ounce holster or so. Um, so that could be probably a little heavy for this. That's more what you'd want for large automatics or western style firearms but in this case I think the guy wants it to be really nice and thick and heavy now I've got this piece that I've I've already got several of these cut out there I use them for making the belt loops and you can stitch just two sides of it and then the belt can go through the slots that are cut or it can go underneath the whole thing going the um, other direction going 90 degrees to it so this holster could be worn uh, either horizontal on the belt as a small of the back or as a strong side vertical holster. Now I'm trimming snaps here. This is probably not a great thing to do, but in order to get them to fit where that thumb brake wraps around, I want to trim off some of the excess metal so I can still stitch around them. And then uh, They don't really get in the way of the machine and cause trouble. And you could technically, you could make your thumb brake bigger, make it wider, but there's problems with that. Either it gets to be too wide to fit where it needs to go on the firearm, or you have to have an end that's bigger than the part of leather going up to it. You have to have it bulge out around the snap. And then that catches when you try to draw. It'll catch on the hammer. So. I think it's best to trim it off. Now, I probably what I should have done was not set the one side of the snap. I should have probably just put the one in, glued it all together, and then after I stitched it, come back and set that upper part of the snap, and I wouldn't have had to probably trim it then. Um, oh, here's another trick. A scrap piece of leather is great for spreading cement over large areas. Now when I glue it up, I glue it folded. It's at least folded about 90 degrees once it's sitting relaxed. Then you don't have as many wrinkles inside of the holster in the lining whenever you uh, finally assemble it. It makes it a little trickier to do all the trimming and such that you need to do, but it makes a lot neater finished look when you're done. Here we got our pieces trimmed up. Now the part where the thumb break is going to be is not actually glued together yet. That'll be something later. I went and took it to the local gun shop and range and made sure it was going to fit between 
this point and the previous and I decided I wanted to put a little bit of a spacer in there to give it a little bit more room. It was probably going to fit but it would have been a little tight. So I'm cutting a piece out of about 8 ounce leather that's just going to be a spacer and make it give it a little extra room around the trigger guard so that it all fits in just a little nicer. Now we're going to punch our holes for the other side of the snap on the thumb brake. And for that I'm using an eighth inch punch for part of it, but then I'm going to use a half inch punch just through the liner. Um, and that will create a spot that the snap kind of recesses into. So there's a little bit less of anything for the firearm to catch on. And it also makes the snap set a lot better if they don't have to go through quite as much material. And then we finally glue all that together. Make sure the holes line up. The stiffeners I use for thumb brakes are ones that are pre-made and they have two holes in them. One of them is for the snap and the other you could actually just put a rivet in if you're putting it on just a single layer of leather rather than lining it like this. I always like to line things. I think it makes stuff look a lot nicer. Now I didn't show the sewing on this one, but I went ahead and sewed around the edges and sewed on the uh, the belt loop on the back of it. And then I'll go and set the snap for the part of the thumb brake. And make sure that it all works and doesn't come flying apart as soon as you unsnap it the first time. Usually you can tell if you got a good set on a snap or not, but there's sometimes I look at them and go, nope, that's not going to work. There's other times that I know it is, but I still test it just because. Now when I stitched it, it stretched the lining just a little bit, so I've got to do a little bit of trimming, and I'm going to go back and do my edge beveling and get it all cleaned up on the places where it's already stitched which the toe of the holster is going to be open so it's been stitched around there and then the top of the holster and then it's ready for actually gluing it all up and we'll put that spacer in a little bit of figuring out which way it goes before we stick it together And then I use these big um, binder clips to hold it together. You only want to do that on dry leather or on leather that you've got dyed black. If a piece of leather is wet and it's still a natural color, these will leave uh, dark marks on it from the iron reacting with the tannins in the leather. But on black it doesn't matter. And. Somewhere in there, I went down and sewed it all together and trimmed it up. And now we're ready to finish up the edges, to dye all those edges, put some gum tragacanth on them, and get ready to burnish it. Then the last step will be to actually take it to the range. And I usually take along some plastic wrap, and I wrap up the firearm in particular. I'll meet the customer with them. And I'll wrap his firearm up in plastic wrap and the holster will be wet and I actually shape it to the, the firearm right there. Uh, you can, of course, use a blue gun for that if you want to spend the money to buy blue guns for all of them. Or if you're making one for your own firearm, you can use the same trick and just use a bit of plastic wrap.